And in reality, as a scientist, I always make the point that, you know, it is hard today to really explain what's a GMO, what's gene editing, what's genetic modification, because you have to kind of step back and, and understand that man, from the very beginning of time, has been genetically modifying all of our crops to produce better foods from the beginning of time. And when you genetically modify, you're moving genes around. And whether you're doing it as a caveman selecting the plants that grow outside your cave, or whether you're a scientist and you're using mutation or advanced breeding or using GMOs or gene editing, it's all the same thing. It's just part of a long and very, very successful and important history to improve our crops. And the reason it's so critical, and I'm talking specifically to you, you're half my age. By 2050, 34 years from now, there will be 10 billion people on the planet, and we absolutely have to farm smarter and better than we do today using new technologies in order to both meet the food demands of the world, which will nearly double, and to be able to farm better so that we, we can return land back to the environment. And, and why, it, you know, it seems like a long way away, it's gonna go by just like that. And, you know, it's, I think about it through the lens of the legacy I leave my kids and grandkids. You need to think about it, you know, as the future world you wanna live in. And the, the message is real simple. In our society, we accept innovations in almost every space. I mean, you know, you stand in line right now for the next generation of the iPhone. This is an iPhone 6. I, I probably need an iPhone 7. So we accept technology for communication. When you go to the doctor's office, I've never heard anybody yet say, get me the same kind of medicine that my grandma got, you know? We, we accept innovation in healthcare but somehow in agriculture and food, there's a, a kind of a belief that the way we used to do it was better. Having grown up on that farm and seeing how hard farming was and, and how challenging it was versus what we can do today with the better seeds through biotechnology, with computers and with very you know, sophisticated sensors that let us get the most out of every little foot of farmland. That's the kind of tools and technologies that we need, not only here in the U.S., but to make sure get deployed around the world so that we can meet that, uh, that, uh, that needs of that 10 billion people and doubling the, uh, the food supply.